Hi, I'm Everett and welcome back to the shop. Um, I know I haven't really been posting much this month. A um, couple reasons for that. Haven't had a whole lot of shop time. Uh, the shop time I did, some of the stuff I did kind of went sideways, so it didn't really work out that way. Now that we've actually got a bit of time to work with, um, we're going to get on to making some parts for the shaper and some accessories. One of the things I really wanted to do with this shaper is be able to cut internal keyways and so we're going to start on making an internal keyway, uh, well, a keyway, spline, that sort of thing, uh, tool holder. Now, before I do that, though, it has been a few weeks since, well, since I've checked in with you in a lot of ways. And in those few weeks, uh, I've got, had a few things come in the mail. And it's been a lot of fun, again, meeting people from all over the world uh, through this channel. And, you know, some other people have channels, some don't. But, you know, so many different people of, of similar mindset and interests. And so, some weeks ago, I got a letter here in an envelope from uh, from England, from uh, from uh, Ayup Tony, as his channel's name. Uh, to yeah, there we go, Tony over in England. Um, he's got a shaper uh, as well. Uh, he's got a number of other different tools. He works in wood and metal, so my hat's off to him because I can build a garden shed, but don't expect me to build a dresser. So. He, uh, he sent me some stickers. Um, I've already got one of the stickers up on the board. Uh, I sent give one to my buddy Eldon, and one of these other ones is going to my friend Grant as well uh, from Fabrication Fun. Um, as well, I also got another letter in the mail just a, well, probably about a week ago, and from, uh, from New Zealand, from uh, Kevin at Machine N, well, I guess it'd be Machine NZ down there, but I mean, Machine NZ, Machine NZ, depends on which side of the pond you're on. And um, he's got a fun little channel. He's got uh, a project on the go right now where he's building a hit and miss engine, and I've always had a soft spot for hit and miss engines, so I thought that was cool. Um, definitely, uh, I there were three. I gave one to Eldon. Thanks, Kevin. I'll definitely get your, uh, get your uh, sticker up on the board. And... One fellow who doesn't have a channel, well, not that I know of, but uh, he's a fellow Canadian named Trevor. Uh, he wound up uh, getting a hold of me. We were talking about a few different things. Uh, one particular piece for his lathe broke, and we were talking about how potentially we could make him a replacement part or whatever. Uh, he just sort of, he wound up just sort of band-aiding his lathe together so he could still use it for the time being. But we were looking at how we could maybe make the replacement part, but it, we don't need to. But yeah, so I get this little surprise in the mail, and... Trevor sent me, well, three little knobs. They're, they're still, they're still sh bubble wrapped, but he sent me three knobs for the mill handles. So I really appreciate that, Trevor. Um, I, like I say, I was just gonna make some, once I ever, ever got around to making a ball turn, I was gonna make some of balls, but this is awesome. Thank you for the, thank you for the present. Thank you for thinking of me. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna grab a, uh, I'm gonna grab one of the uh, handles and we'll fit one to it right now. So I went and grabbed one of the, uh, uh, one of the handle uh, rods off of the mill and uh, that's the end that goes in the hub and sure enough it's a number 12 or sorry uh, half inch 12 TPI thread so I'll put all three of those on the mill and we'll be good to go so thanks again Trevor I appreciate it so that was kind of a bonus there very very kind of him to do that so as far as getting on to the actual project that we're wanting to do here um, I actually did this project once before. Uh, that's part of why I was saying I haven't really reported in for a while. It was a few weeks ago I finally got around to starting in on the keyway and spline cutter for the, for the shaper. And it was one of those things where I was actually kind of overtired, uh, but I just I had a bit of time to play with, so I came out here anyway and just kept at it and trying and trying. And I made quite a few mistakes, and it kind of got to the point where I just... Um, you know how you get to the point where you realize if you keep at it, you're either going to hurt yourself or break something expensive? I just walked away. So it's been a little while since I've been out here uh, doing, uh, doing anything like that, kind of serious with that. So I've actually got one, but I don't like how it turned out. I don't like the fit and finish on it. I, don't, I just don't like it. And um, I'm not going to... I'm not going to deny that I made mistakes and stuff in it, and all, the, a lot of the mistakes will be going on the blooper reel when it comes out, because uh, I did video it. But we're going to make one of these only correct this time. So I did revise the plan that I made, because before I made it up, 
I even made a plan for it at the, you know, that one there. But so I, I revised it and all the other parts. Um, I will keep the little washer that I made. That'll still work. Well, washer's a washer, but the rest of it's going to get redone. So that's what we're up to. We're going to make a, uh, a cutting tool holder for the shaper to do splines and to do uh, keyways. But uh, hopefully this one will work out better. Hope you find it interesting. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a piece of old uh, highway tractor air brake S cam shaft because I have lots of it. We're going to cut this end off, which is snarled because of the uh, flame cut. Yep, very thankful for this bandsaw. Toss that aside. We'll cut a 10 inch chunk, roughly 25 and, well, yeah, roughly 25.4. There we go. <clears throat> now, this nasty scale on the outside is not good for ways or any machines or whatever. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, go outside with the uh, disc grinder and a, uh, well, basically a wire wheel and then a surface conditioning disc. And we're going to clean the outside surface of this off. Um, I did do this in the shop with one uh, of the previous attempts. Uh, before I mess something up. So so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this and uh, run outside and clean up the outside surface. I'm just going to use a wire wheel and then a surface conditioning disc with a disc grinder and we'll be right back. So after a little bit of work with the wire wheel and the surface conditioning disc, uh, that ugly piece of metal actually turns out not looking so bad. Uh, the thing is, if you look really closely at the surface, you'll see that there's still little pits of you know, rust pitting. So after doing the first few cuts, what I like to do is move the carriage back and then clean the ways, uh, just because then you've gotten rid of that part. What we're gonna do first is chuck it up. I'm gonna f uh, face this end just to face it. And then um, we're gonna carve back and make just a little shoulder on this end so that I have something that the jaws can grab onto, but as I push this way with the tool pressure, it doesn't push the work in past the jaws. Well, little man's in bed, so daddy gets to come play again. Now uh, we need to bring this outer diameter down to 1.375 for inch and three eighths. Right now we are at 1.529. Let's try a 30 thou depth of cut. Oh, those are cutting nicely.
yeah, 1.373. We're within a couple thou of what I need. That This is just gonna create the little shoulder uh, to get caught inside the clapper box. Let's make a little mark here, just ahead of the line. There we go. That's our do not, do not pass. Well, sad to say, I've uh, actually been away from the lathe for a few days, and it has sat here chucked up uh, since I was cutting on it last. So, anyway, um, it was quite warm when I had uh, left it last. Hopefully, if all goes well. Oh, yeah. There we go. That's actually, yeah, that's a good fit. I like that. There's a little bit of a snag there, but that's where it was, uh, yeah, there we go, yeah. Yep, I like that. So, the diameter that now fits inside this bore is done. Uh, I believe what I want to do next is cut down to the outer diameter size of our thread, um, and then uh, from there we can start uh, working down uh, smaller and smaller sizes to the taper to the final business end of this thing. What can I say? Steve got me thinking. Steve Summers was mentioning a while back how it really bothered him when he saw people use digital calipers and such and dial calipers to uh, just sit there and scratch on a uh, on a line because it will wear the jaws. And he is right. I mean, this is actually they're used, but these are a nice set of mitted Toyos. I'd rather not wreck them. He is right. I got to give him that. So I'll try a different tool here. See if that helps. Oh, 1.124 and a half. Not that warm. I'll take it. So that's the outside of our uh, that's the outside of our thread. Now we need the length of our thread. So the next step is this diameter has to come down to one inch, 45 degree angle at that point. So I changed over tools. We'll try this guy. I have the leading edge of it set at uh, 45 degrees. Yeah. Thirty thou depth to cut. but at least they're short snarlies. says I'm three inch, three thousandths over one inch, but I can feel some heat in it, so we're going to leave that. Call that good. Anybody who's really into precision is going to cringe at some of my methods, but this is certainly going to be close enough for what I needed to do. All right, so the rest of this comes down to five eighths with that um, uh, with, with that uh, f 45 degree chamfer on the front of this. Okay, so that'd be, yeah, 707. 
You know something? I was going to go to 5.8. I think I'm going to change the design slightly. I think I'm going to make this 700 thousandths. I like the look of this better than my, the one I had before. I suppose I'm the... <laughs> I'm the one in the uh, design department as well as down the shop floor, so I guess I'm the only one I can cuss myself out So for changing the design halfway through production. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to let this cool off and then we're going to bring that, uh, we're going to make that 700 thousandths. Now, one thing I want to do before I finish up tonight, so it cools off a bit, is I'm going to make my thread relief right here. Um, now the thread relief needs to be uh, 30 thousandths a side uh, in for, um, for having your gutter to drop into when you're single point threading. So what I'm going to do, we'll go right up to that shoulder. Yeah. Well, good thing that wasn't critical. And that will work just fine. The reason I like to use these V-style tools is rather than using a um, parting tool for getting in there, what this does is that gives me both the little bit of a chamfer to lead out of the thread as I'm cutting, but it also gives me a radius at the bottom instead of a sharp corner. And for this application, no, it's not going to be a high strength, high stress issue. However, you know, <laughs> and just trying to make it a practice. So that should work just fine for our purposes. Yeah. The reason I wanted to use high speed steel is because you're taking such a light cut. I may still have to sand in the end. Wow, actually that didn't come out too badly. That's quite a reasonable surface finish, really, considering what I'm up against. So where are we at here? <laughs> I'll take it. Right on 700. Well, I think we're going to end off there. Uh, at this point, we have the uh, we have the tool holder cut mostly to shape. Uh, still have to knock the back end off and put some of the other features into it, but uh, we don't really want the video going longer than it really needs to. So, uh, again, thanks to everybody uh, for coming by. Thanks to all you who have subscribed. Uh, leave comments and the likes and, uh, you know, people who send me emails. It's awesome. Uh, if you haven't subscribed, that's totally fine. Thanks for coming by. It's, uh, it's cool to have you in my shop. Otherwise, uh, like I say, thanks for everything, and I'll see you in the next video.